I just need to shut up and let the game do the talking. <laughs> We're going to kill my... And I'm just going to have to prove it to you. It hovers over the entire house. The hand is purple with the power, wrinkled with age, and swells up to cave badly enough that I almost vomit. The flesh is also covered in eyeballs of varying sizes. Maybe I'll just have to squish you. You wouldn't be useful for anything else. Gross. There's another girl in the kitchen wearing a yellow jacket and purring herself some tea. Heather! Good morning, Mr. I have long awaited the day we would meet. Nope. Look at this laugh. It's a fucking one beast laugh. <laughs> You'll never stop me. <laughs> Die, you insufferable pest. Oh my god. <laughs> it's been no time at all for me. It's been literally two seconds. Let's get back into this. Um, in case you forgot, um, actually, no. I probably did a thing where I took like the last minute of the other video and just paste it at the beginning of this one. So let's go. Let's get it right into it. Annoyed, yes, but not surprised. Must you be so loud? My words cause them both to pause and look my way. The room is a mess. There are scythe marks carved deep into the wall, and as stated, the lamp is once again broken on the floor. There's a top little of a dresser, too, in the other corner of the room. Heather immediately puts her scythe away. I apologize, Master. I was trying to keep Niala from waking you up. I muted all the sound in the room. You failed, though. Some guard you are can't even stop me from- Oof. Niala's words cut off as Heather plants her boot right into and then on top of Niala's face. So Niala can avoid multiple swings from a massive scythe, and yet she can't avoid the wrath of Heather's heel. <laughs> That's worth noting. Master, please grant me permission to kill Niala. I'm a few steps away from begging you. But she's also one literal step away from caving in Niala's face. Not now, Heather. I really am not fond of violence. However, I get the impression Yala will take advantage of it if I don't make it a different excuse. It'd be too hard to get her god blood out of the carpet. It's not worth that effort. Just let it be for now. Heather seems a little disappointed, but she obediently removes her foot, her boot from Yala's face. She opens her mouth to say something, but I quickly interrupt. If you try and cause more problems, I won't stop her next time. <laughs> Killjoy. I don't see what Heather sees in you. I don't either. I get the impression that you and Heather rarely see the same thing, so to speak. Heather hums softly in agreement. <laughs> Still, you saw something too, didn't you? You did bring me here, girl. Nyala cracks a devilish grin. I suppose you're right. I feel like Nyala, as an entity, is the world's most fascinating house fire. Thank you! Thank you! It is... <laughs> I want... I want both these characters in my life. Nyala just for the <laughs> unending reign of chaos. And then Heather as an actual person I can count on. I would prefer she didn't call me master though. That would A be weird and probably put in my head pretty quick. But yeah. One you just can't look away from. Exactly. It's an utter catastrophe. Horrifying. Everything's burning and there's at least three children. <laughs> and yet you keep watching. Probably because it'll kill you too if you take your eyes off it for even a second. I might have lost control of the metaphor there. No, no, no. You had, you had control the entire way through. I was right there with you. So is there food here for breakfast? Heather steps up immediately. I brought some food to the house while you slept. Well, on your clock, it's a little... While on your clock it's a little bit past breakfast time, I would be happy to make you pancakes. Nyala begins to bounce eagerly up and down. Oh, let me help. No, absolutely not. Before Nyala can pout or complain, I attempt an alternative. Nyala, mm -hmm. you seem the sort to enjoy games. She pulls off a kind of faked coy expression. Maybe. How about while Heather makes you breakfast, you go and obtain some games for us to play? Card games, board games, video games, doesn't matter. If I'd offer you cash, we can probably create things like that from thin air. Oh. 
she would prefer cash. Go down to the game store, see what tickles your fancy, and make up a copy here. How does that sound? Yala is staring at his wide eyes. For a moment, she almost seems touched. It's quickly gone, replaced with a self-satisfied smirk. What, you think an insect like you can beat me at games? We won't know till we try. That's not what that said. Besides, it'd kill time, no? You're on, termite. And with that, she's gone. Feather looks mildly impressed. Not bad, master. Thanks, I figured it might be worth a shot. I ponder a moment before asking, do you and Yala eat? We can, but we have no need to. Why ask? I don't know, you guys eat food together. I don't know. I mean, we're roommates now, right? It's like, I don't eat with my roommates typically, but like, we do sometimes. Yeah, see? It's like, well, it'd be no fun for me to eat alone. It's like, I was able to be kind of pretty normal. The spirits that haunt my house did that from time to time, so. Heather doesn't question the spirits thing. I'm sure it's God. She knows all about that kind of phenomena. Are you sure? Well, only if it's not extra work for you to make extra pancakes. You don't have to worry about that. I am but a servant. It's never any trouble for me if it's for you. No, that's not... Mm, whatever. It, yeah, that's that's still going to take some getting used to. I hope you don't mind to make some extra pancakes for yourself and Yala. We both know she'll complain if we leave her out. Heather noticeably bites back a sigh before nodding. Yes, Master. Do you know what you're going to do? Uh... I'll work that out in a moment. Go on ahead of me. Heather gives a bow before departing for the kitchen. She gets a small pause at the door with them. She looks back at me, seeming almost sheepish, before giving me a small wave of her hand. Just like that, the room is back to normal. No scratches, no toppled furniture, intact lamp, the works. After that, Heather leaves the room. It's still surreal to watch Rihanna to get warped in such a way. I don't think I'll ever get used to it. Then again, I've seen many things just as weird and gotten used to them before, so perhaps I'm wrong. I lay down in bed for a bit longer, but eventually I begin to feel a bit like a lump. I just had two others, or gods no less, go off to do other tasks for my benefit, and here I am staring at the ceiling. I should maybe go and help one of them. Which one should I spend time with, though? Mm -hmm. Okay, 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 important decision, important decision. Uh, so, so. Important decision. Okay, okay, okay. I'm going to treat this as I myself would. I'm gonna go help Heather with the pancakes. Well, because in my mind, this is essentially like, let's go hang out with my little sister and pick out some video games. Or let's go help a friend make some pancakes. Because I don't want to date either of these two. If I had a date, one of these two would probably be Heather. But even then, it's like, I'd, she needs to stop calling me master like now. Immediately. Just not okay. And she needs to start thinking about herself a little bit more than she thinks about me, you know, if I was going to date her. But, um, no, yeah, I'm going to go help Heather with pancakes. Because maybe if I spend time making pancakes with Heather, then she'll, you know, I don't know, maybe think about herself for a bit before. Niala is a force of chaos. I'm sure she'll be fine later. Nyala scares me. Nyala does scare me, but ultimately it's like, I don't know. I don't know. She's scary, she's scary, but she's like a little kid. She's like a little kid, she just wants attention. I think Heather is a safer bet. Besides, even if she calls me master, I don't want to take advantage of her helpfulness. See, there we go. Standing up, I head to the kitchen. Heather is already getting started, having organized everything on the counter. Measuring cups, pans, ingredients. It's quite organized. Hey, Heather. She glances up and offers a small bow of her head. Shouldn't you try and get more rest? Nah, I'd, I'd feel like a piece of furniture if I didn't try and do something, you know? Mind if I assist? 
she pauses at the request. I know a few recipes that won't set the house on fire, and if I make any mistakes, I'm sure it's an easy fix for you. It's alright if you want to help, I was just surprised. Maybe I shouldn't be. She muses silently for a few moments. You alright? Of course, master. Come here, allow me to teach you. She sounds even... <laughs> she even sounds happier. I don't know why, but it makes me feel good too. I move to the kitchen, and Heather begins to go step by step over the recipe. I copy as best I can. After a few moments, she steps behind me and wraps her arms around me. What the fuck is happening? Oh, I see. She lightly guides my hands and shows me the technique. It's not long before we begin making other foods too, besides just pancakes. You make it You better make him bacon first. Damn it. We cut, we cut up some fruits and vegetables. Heather shows me how for technique when using a knife. We make some scrambled eggs and omelets too. Scrambled eggs are pretty good. I like omelets. Okay, fair enough. I'm not one for cooking anything fancy, actually. But I find myself having a lot of fun. As we work, Heather is mostly instructive. But as we wait for the pancakes to cool a little... Master, I hope you don't mind if I ask. Ask away, Heather. She gives a soft chuckle, sounding almost nervous. You don't mind when I talk, do you? No! Huh? Why would I mind? Yeah. Does Nyala give you crap for speaking or something? Yeah, it's like... If it were only Nyala, I wouldn't have asked. Good. Good. Nyala's a force of chaos. Someone important to me used to criticize me whenever I spoke. That's so sad. Oh, it's so sad. Oh my god. Oh my god, that's sad. Man, the amount of like people I know who um when they start going off about something they enjoy, they just kinda shut themselves up with a um sorry. You know, it's it's like they they they, they are really passionate about something or they just want to talk about something, they just start going and then like after like a minute or two they'll shut up and they'll be like, Oh, sorry. And you sit there and it's like, man, I know someone important in their life in the past used to, like, get annoyed or, like, get bored or, like, stop listening to them after a certain while. And so it just becomes habit for them when they start talking about things that they enjoy talking about. They're just like, oh, I'm sorry, I was talking about something I enjoyed. I know that's forbidden of me. God, that's such fucking... I hate that. I fucking hate that. You're the... No, I don't freaking mind. Well, to give you a proper analysis, you're helpful, your voice is pretty, and even if I didn't think that, you could talk whenever you felt like. Heather looks startled, but then smiles warmly. Thank you. I'm so glad. Her smile makes me feel warm inside. You know. Nyala returns in due time, and at that time we've set the table and finished preparing all of the food. Nyala seems taken aback, but she seems almost excited as well. With everyone home, we all sit down to eat breakfast. Oh dear god, the force of chaos is here. Pancakes, pancakes, wee! A uh, small child. Nyala seems shocked as though she sees just how much food is on the table. I'm flattered, Heather, you made so much food for me. Don't be foolish, you know it's not for you. Master joined me and we made food together. Yeah, I had a good time. I did too. Get a room, you two. I give her a look before taking a seat. Nyala hops onto a chair and begins to drag the entire plate of pancakes. No. Unacceptable. <laughs> Heather pulls out her scythe, and in under a second, it's again sniffed. <laughs> she gives an uneasy laugh, pushes the plate back, and takes two for herself. Only once I'm seated, and I've gotten myself some pancakes too, does she put the scythe away. Heather takes a seat beside me. Further away from Nyala. I, by the way, whoever made this game, thank you for putting that one image, that one drawing in there. It's beautiful. I love it. With that, we begin to eat. It's a relief in a way. I haven't eaten anything since breakfast the day before. That said, it's also normal. More normal than I'm used to. No spirits, ghosts, shadow people, random vampire break in. Then again, I guess my breakfast companions are both gods. That kind of makes up for it. These pancakes are amazing, Heather. Thank you. Silence, Nyala, huh? They're alright, I guess. Yeah, she's definitely a child. 
Heather's lips twitched slightly, maybe in amusement. I'm sure that's the closest Niala has ever gotten to a compliment for Heather. Once I'm done, I place my fork down. So, about my reason for being here. That immediately grabs both of them their attention. Niala speaks first. Right, we're gonna take out my mom. Uh, yeah, how do I even go about that exactly? There are a few things we need to do to get you prepared. You don't need to think about that right now. If I may make a suggestion, you can consider it more once we've visited the lighthouse. The lighthouse, huh? Heather mentioned that place this morning. The lighthouse is where gods of lesser strength reside. Some of the more powerful gods are completely incapable of traversing Earth at all. Sometimes they'll communicate with gods on Earth if they're really in hell, if they really need something. Though that's rare. Ah, yay! A carry is so fun to play with. Carry? I don't trust that. I'm sure Sherry, Shari would be just as fun for you, don't you think? <sighs> Trying to think of who they are. I think I know. Probably not. Nyala gasps dramatically and folds her arms. How dare you? So I have no idea who either of those people are. I might have an idea. I decide to interrupt. When am I going to see the lighthouse, though? Well, Master, I was planning on visiting tomorrow on a personal errand. However, if you think you need more time, I do not require you attend with me. No! Nyala slams both her hands on the table. That's not what it says. Nyala slams her hands on the table, almost knocking her plate off the table in the process. She passed like a child. I want the bug to kill my mom soon. Nida is coming with us tomorrow. That's not your choice, Nyala. It's all right, I'll go. Now shut up and eat your pancakes, Nyala. Her, her look is a mix of pleased and annoyed at my words. Still, she does obey. Are you sure, master? I do not wish to trouble you, even if Nyala does. I smile wryly. Eh, I want to see the place. I've seen a lot of weird things, but I've never been to this lighthouse place. I think it'd be kind of exciting. Man, he's about to get to the lighthouse, and it's just going to be his living room. Your positive outlook is inspiring, Master. Alright, we'll go together. I nod and move to finish my food as well. We finish our breakfast, then Heather and I put all the dishes away. I try to convince Niada to help, but by the time I even think to ask, she's gone off somewhere else. Go figure. Yeah, it sounds like Nyala. Who should I spend time with? Heather. Well. See, now I feel bad, because Nyala really does remind me of the little sister. And I'm like, I should probably spend time with my little sister. Grrr. Force of Chaos, you will get my time tomorrow. Today is Heather Day. I decide to check out what Heather is doing. I track her down to the outside of the house through a back door. This is so pretty! She seems to create a little bubble in the backyard, invisible from the front entrance, since I've checked there and hadn't seen it before. Heather is crouched down off to one side, tending to what appears to be a garden. One side, by the way. I don't know. Whatever. They'll fix it, probably. To my surprise, she seems to have planted seeds, and is watering them normally. Hey, Heather! She greets me with a hmm, placing the watering can down and standing up, turning to face me. Good afternoon, Master. Is there something you need from me? Nah, I was mostly just checking in. Though I'm kind of surprised to see flowers here. They don't grow normally up here, but I've created a pocket in which they can exist. I thought, maybe a nice yard might be a place for you to retreat to if you need to think. She hesitates. I should have asked first, but if you don't like it, I can easily scrap the area and make something else. Heather, don't be ridiculous. It's very thoughtful of you. I like it. Thank you for coming up with it. I meant I was surprised you were growing flowers normally. I would have thought you just conjured them up or something. Heather looks both pleased and a little embarrassed. Heather, to serve, Master, and I'm pleased you like it. I could just conjure up some flowers and be done, but I will admit, perhaps it's more for my benefit. It used to be rather tedious taking care of the house. Now you are here, however, if I wish to put my all into it. Still, 
When there is downtime, I enjoy having extra activities to do. It makes time pass a bit faster. I see. Yeah, I think I can understand that. Yeah, you didn't read every book in that library. I approach her side and examine the mix of topsoil and small green stems lightly poking out of the ground. I'm sure there is a slightly godly influence at play, but I still find myself rather looking forward to seeing what grows. I'm no garden expert, I've never grew plants in my house for fear I might accidentally grow a man-eating Venus flytrap or something of that ilk. Come to think of it, there's a plant that matches my fears right at the house's veranda. Still, doesn't mean these ones aren't pretty. It does seem like a perfect place to relax. Maybe I can ask Heather to make a pool so I can even swim, if the preference hits me. I know how to swim, but I've always refused to enter lakes or oceans. Me too! This, this, okay, 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 okay. Okay, ignoring the fish poop. Ignoring the disgusting fish poop. Oceans, salt. I hate salt. Salt's disgusting. So on oceans, yeah, it's basically just fucking fish poop, and then also the disgusting salt. Oh. And also, the, the way it gets your hair constantly, it's like, oh, oh. And then moving on from that, lakes, oh my god. Lakes are worse. At least the ocean has currents. The ocean, the water is moving back and forth. There's currents, there's movement. It's not just, the fish poop isn't always there. You know, it's always kind of there, but like, it moves. So like, the fresh fish poop goes away. And then like, obviously some fresh fish poop might come back. But my point is, in lakes, in lakes? Are you kidding me? It's, swimming in a lake is like you filled up a bathtub, took a shit in it, pissed in it, and then swam in it. Like, what the hell? Why would you do that? That's disgusting. Why? Why? Just why? And then you sit there and you think about all the freaking like, disgusting parasites and freaking disgusting things in lakes. Especially, especially lakes. Freaking lakes. You could- No, 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 It'd be great to have a safe location to swim for once. A clean location to swim. Thank you very much. Even swimming pools aren't safe. They're community swimming pools. Do you swim, Heather? Huh? Oh, not typically, but I would join you if your quest is roughly master. That sounds fun. Heather picks up the watering can once more and quietly returns to watering the plants. Though I can tell she's keeping an eye on me too. By the way, I really like this cloak. <laughs> it's like so cute. I mean, look at it, it's so cute. There's a massive tree in the middle of the said field. Good for climbing and having branches set up for that thing, man. Climbing trees is so fun. That one was definitely conjured. It's too perfect not to have been. I stare at, out at it for a little while, my thoughts drifting. I don't think I've ever been quite this off guard at peace. And to think, it only took getting abducted by an insane elder god of chaos for it to happen. Go figure. Eventually, I begin to walk again and make my way over the tree. I hear Heather put down the watering can and I slow down so she can join me. Ever make something like this for someone else? No. She hesitates for a moment before adding, Not quite like this. Did you have a previous master? This is also no hesitance, and she gives a small nod. Yes, however, she was not nearly as kind as you. She would regularly scold me over the smallest thing, strike me, push me around, insult me, was in Yala. I can hardly imagine what kind of entitled monster would treat Heather in such a way. That's awful, I'm sorry. It's quite alright. It's in the past now. I live to serve you now, Master, and that's what I plan to do. I still don't quite understand it, but if it brings her peace and gives her a sense of fulfillment, who am I to take that from her? Good boy, good boy. Just... No, I'm grateful, okay? Even if I'm still a little confused of being called Master. Would you prefer to be called something else? Whatever is most comfortable for you is fine, really. I like this Nido. I like this Nido character. He's a good boy. Good lad. Good lad. Good heart. She nods, and I reach the edge of the large tree. With a glance back at Heather, I reach up to the first branch and climb on up onto it. I glance back and see her removing her yellow cloak. She folds it neatly under the tree, uh, 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 under the tree before she climbs up after me, watching my feet more than her own. Once we're high up enough for my liking, I take a seat on a comfortable branch. Hi, hi, okay. So, I used to climb trees a lot. I, I'd say, judging by the um, swing, judging by the swing, I'm, I'm going off that height. I'm assuming that swing right there is a little bit above 
um, like, basically a little bit above butt height, you know, so you can spin properly. I, I'd probably get a little bit of, on the right side, on the right side, if you see through the tree those branches, I'd probably get, um, to that top opening part, which I'm, I'm very upset you guys can't see my mouse. <sighs> oh, whatever, anyway, I'd, I'd get, whatever, I'd get, like, 70% up, up to the straight line, I'd be like, that's ah, high enough for me. Heather tests the branch before joining me, sitting a little further out to my right. We stay up on the branches until I realize it seems like there's a sun setting. I'm sure it's just a replica and trick of the light and the bubble Heather has created, and my glance at her confirms it. Still, wasn't her cloak? Oh, whatever. So she's smiling with an almost hopeful expression. I grin and nod, which makes, seems to make her feel relieved. When it begins to get dark, I decide to head inside. I alert Heather, and together we make our way down the tree and head inside. I thank Heather for the time spent, and I move to my room preparing to go to bed. I need to spend time with Niala. I get maybe a few hours of rest, closing my eyes and sleeping decently and dreamlessly. When I wake, though, it's still early, just a little past 1 a.m. It's like adjusting to a new time zone in a way. Pawing lightly at my eyes, I move to the bedroom window. There's almost a chilly breeze near it, though I doubt it's truly winter air. That would require an atmosphere. Still, it's cold, and it doesn't feel too unpleasant. However, when I lean against the windowsill, I see something that catches me off guard. A woman in blue and white stands facing away from the window amongst the clouds. What is this? She's beautiful, looking composed, and a little serious from where I'm standing. I wonder if she's lost. She's facing away from me, but she's not walking anywhere. What do you mean you wonder if she's lost? She has a shackle around one leg, and a ball and chain. Oh, I see it. It's a jarring contrast to the rest of her. Despite knowing it's dangerous, part of me is drawn to her. I couldn't possibly explain why. I stand and move to the front door and go see to see her. She's still there when I get outside. I'm hesitant, but I eventually gather the nerve to call out, Excuse me, are you alright? Miss, who can only be an elder god because you're living in the dreamscape, you know, naturally. Her back strains up in surprise, and she turns slightly to look at me. Her smile is warm. Something about it feels... Something about it is almost familiar, but again, an explanation as to why eludes me. She turns to face me entirely. Something about her very presence seems mystical. Powerful, even. This, this is Adia. I know I should be nervous, terrified even. I'm not. Are you lost? A little bit, but that's okay. I find I have a funny way of being where I need to be. Yes, I bet so. Who are you, little child? I almost argue that I'm not a child, but I suppose by these elder god standards, every human is a child. My name's Nida. What about you? A look of surprise crosses her face. I keep getting itchy, yeah. Then one of delight and amusement. Oh, I don't think that's the right question for me. That's fine, though. You wouldn't happen to have seen a little kitty, have you? A cat? You mean Yala? You know, purple fur, stumpy tail, single eye. Mangy little thing. Yeah, she's talking about Yala. Yeah. Why, why do people always... It's, again, Yala the, the... It's purple and it's cats. It's always those two. I don't know why. Possibly she's doing alright. She hears. I wonder how dead I'd be if Nyala heard me say that. You'd be dead six times over. At least. Not quite. I can't talk to her right now, though. Reasons. Reasons. But I want to make sure she's in good hands. She's not. She's she's on her own, basically. I haven't spent time with her at all. Uh, she's a handful, but yeah, she seems happy enough. That, okay, you know, that statement is true. Yeah, then that's all that matters. Oh, thank you, Nida. The woman moves over to me and pulls me into a hug so tight that I'm not fully certain that damage isn't done to my back. When she releases me, I make sure I can still move my legs and that my spine didn't snap during that. Pretty, it's no problem. She feels. You'll be okay out there, lost or otherwise. This place is home to me. Don't you worry about me, little one. She pinches my cheek lightly. It takes a lot of willpower not to smack her hand away. Not because she's doing anything wrong, mind. Just instinct. 
if you insist. I'm sure you're an elder god too, but do you need a do you need a drink or food before you go on your way? Oh, you're so cute. I wish I could take you with me. Have you have business here, don't you? I can't interfere with that now, can I? Somehow, despite her airheaded tone of voice, there's a knowing twinkle in her eye. Jesus Christ. No, no, I'll be okay, little Nida. I don't need anything more than what I've already got. Look at you, you're so cute. Like the, the sleepy, sleepy in the bottom right, this is definitely audio. She ruffles my hair and beams. She even leans down and kisses the top of my head. She pulls away after that, though, and in a split second seems to forget I'm even there. I wonder where my feet will take me next. There's always so much to see. And with that, she has begun walking away. Confused and a bit bewildered, I watch her as she walks away until she's out of sight. What an odd woman. Quite kind, but maybe not entirely there, mentally. I'm still a bit confused as I turn and go back inside the house. I have trouble going back to sleep. I sleep poorly, my thoughts confused and troubled. Who was that woman anyway? That was Aria. Something about her seemed familiar somehow. Probably because she's similar to Miala. She has the same um, clothing, the um, one stocking, one not stocking, you know. Um, the eye is also super similar to um, how Nyala's eye is drawn. You know. Also, she was worried about Nyala like a mother would be. Call her a cat. But to be fair, she does act like a cat. Cats are brats. I love cats, though. Cats are amazing. Yeah? No? You know what? I'm starting to see why people are. Um, when, when they like. When they make Nyala the, the, the horrifying eldritch creature, when, when they anime they are the Dota. they typically make him agent of chaos and cats are just agents of chaos you know i'm starting to get it now i'm starting to get it but to save my life i can't pinpoint why or where from the unanswered question haunts me but they don't exactly scare me like the spirits in my house the questions are there and i'm not trying to deal with it but i'm familiar with their presence and it doesn't bother me she was strange but calming I wish I had gotten her name. She knew Nyala. You've unlocked a new trophy. Cool. I guess I flicker out of consciousness at some point. My first awakening is a false one. I can't move. I'm asleep in my bed back on Earth. There are rats in the walls. I can hear them scratching incessantly through hidden passages in the bricks. Nyala is sitting nearby, grinning at me with a malice I've never actually seen in her expression. Still, it's not much of a stretch. I know the stories that surround that girl. She's silly at times, but possibly the most dangerous being I have ever encountered. She is the most dangerous being you've ever encountered. Pastor Heather at least follows rules. Yeah, that does it. And yet, even in my dreams, she's not a serious figure. Because before the sound of the rats becomes overwhelming, it stops abruptly when the woman from last night shows up. She lightly takes the purple book I originally found Yala in and bonks her on the head with it. Yala wails, runs to me, hugs me, and complains, She's bullying me! <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I wake up shortly after. Heather is sitting silently at my bedside, reading a book. What book? No, what book is it? She notices me when I awaken, closing the book and setting it aside. Is it a playbook? Good morning, Master. You have some leftovers from breakfast yesterday. You should eat before we leave for the lighthouse today. By the way, I want to say, I like this version of Pastor more than the freaking baby. She heaves a slightly exasperated sigh. Nyala insists on coming along. I can't dissuade her, as she has a few friends at the lighthouse. You might meet them. I can't even imagine what kinds of friends Nyala would have. They're either just as troublesome as her, or they have the patience of absolute saints. The former is way more likely than the latter. Still, I stand and make my way to the kitchen. Nyala is sitting on the window sill, but when she sees me, she hops down and bounces on over. Buggy! Hey, don't we miss that sound? What's the lighthouse even like? It's a whole world located in a small pocket on Earth. Typically, lesser gods live there. There's a few odd creatures here and there that aren't gods, too. Creatures you describe as alien-looking, and non-human tentacle creatures. 
I, I, I'm sure those are the same category, but thank you for separating the alien-looking creatures and the hentai creatures. That separation is very appreciated. I bite my lips as I go get to get the leftovers. They won't be drawn to me? You're not that exciting, dummy. I don't... From the way that there's both you and you... Yellow and purple. Complimentary colors. Only on the RYB color wheel, but still, complimentary colors. That works well. That works well. Works well. I like the art. Rather, I really like the art. I got distracted for a bit by the art. Ignore Nyala. The creatures there are more familiar with oddities of varying strength than anything you'd see in any place outside it, except for you two in this house, and the woman I met last night. Even if you have a penchant to draw inhuman things towards you, the rest of the anomalous activity at the lighthouse will more likely overwhelm your own personal aura. In short, you should be safe from anything that's not godly. By all means, I sure hope so. Everything is set. We're ready to go and you are, master. I'm a bit uneasy, but with Nyala and especially Heather there, everything should be fine, right? I'm ready to go. Okay, except I am not. This video is much shorter than the other one, um, but I feel like this is a good place to stop before getting to um, the lighthouse where I'm assuming I'm going to be meeting um, Nyala said Carrie, and I'm assuming that's a green girl, which means that... Um... Well, I don't, I don't actually know about that. Whatever, whatever, whatever. I'm still curious as to the blood red, the blood red one. You know, you know, you know, you know? Anyway, moving on. Um, I'm gonna save, and then we're gonna get... Bam! Perfect. This is a really fun game, by the way. Anyway. I'll see you all in the next one. I, I, I don't... Wow, I think I just blew out my mic. Anyway, I hope to finish this up in the next episode. I don't want to drag it on for, like, several episodes. This is, um, this is really good, though. God, this is great. Anyway, yeah, I'll see you on the next one. Bye.